Habitat enhancement is often an overlooked and undervalued aspect of fisheries management. Creating and maintaining a bass fishery often ends at stocking the correct quantities and sizes of fish without ever actually taking a look at the environment in which those fish are to occupy. Having an ideal quantity of habitat can really maximize the growth potential for a species like bass. So let's begin by first defining what habitat means to both the pond owner and lake manager alike. The physical space or environment around a population or individuals in which biological processes occur, such as feeding, can be considered habitat. From a biologist's perspective, habitat is just as important to consider as those biological processes. For some species, like bass and bluegill, there is a tendency to associate with particular forms of habitat. For example, more often than not, bass and bluegill will associate with some form of cover, be it submerged aquatic vegetation, woody debris, or even artificially made structures. So given that association, what value does cover provide to the fishery? How does it work? For some species of fish, physically providing specific forms of habitat can promote ecological interactions and biological processes that result in effective feeding, increased fish growth, and fish congregation for successful angling. Typically, bass exhibit opportunistic ambush feeding behavior, striking out at prey that are close enough for sensory perception. Without cover, and especially in clear water, bass must expend greater amounts of energy for each successful capture of prey. Given the amount of forage that is necessary for just one pound of growth in bass, minimizing energy use for consumption in predators and increasing prey density is paramount to achieve trophy level growth. Providing cover for ambush feeding and prey congregation is one way to promote effective feeding. So now that we know why habitat is valuable, let's go over some management guidelines for habitat enhancement, specifically woody debris and artificial habitat. Simply put, approximately 20 to 30% of surface acreage in a pond or lake should have some form of fish habitat like woody debris or artificial structures. Trees that were flooded when a lake was created and felled trees like cedars arranged along the shoreline are great forms of habitat for bass and potential prey like bluegill. However, there is a lifespan of usefulness. When lakes or ponds are first created, the vast majority of the habitat complexity from flooded vegetation like bushes and trees, smaller limbs forming an intricate network of habitat, remains intact for about a year or so. Then, that wood starts to decompose. Decomposition, combined with weathering, removes small limbs, then larger limbs, and so on. For example, a tree that is sunk in the lake may only have the primary trunk and a few broken larger limbs after four to five years submerged. The actual area of coverage decreases each season, bit by bit, until all that remains is functionally less useful. So I like to think about it like this. Just because you see a few limbs sticking up out of the water doesn't actually mean that that habitat is as valuable as it was when it was first placed or flooded. The point is this. Natural habitat needs to be replaced as it ages. If you choose natural cover like cedars or other trees, just keep in mind that you really only have three to four years of usefulness before the majority of the habitat complexity is lost. If you are actively replacing habitat or even starting from scratch, consider artificial habitat structures like pond kings, honey hole trees, and shrubs. Unlike natural habitat, artificial habitat won't degrade. Remember that the goal is roughly 20 to 30% of total surface acreage having some form of habitat, whether that's manageable aquatic vegetation, woody debris, or artificial habitat. Let's put this into perspective. For a two acre pond, that's roughly half an acre's worth of some form of habitat. That's quite a lot of habitat. Remember to place your habitat both in shallow and in deep water. Don't focus all of your habitat enhancement efforts in the deepest portion, and that's for both new ponds in construction as well as for pre-existing ponds. Generally speaking, and in the southern parts of North America, seasonal thermal lake stratification patterns as well as reproductive and feeding behaviors will congregate bass in shallower water during spring. Fish will disperse into deeper water during the winter. As such, think about stratification patterns when habitat is placed. For a rough guideline, consider this. Spring habitat should be placed in depths less than 8 to 10 feet. Fall and winter habitat can be distributed into deeper portions. Have fun and be creative. Any habitat is good habitat. Some, like this honey hole shrub, are a little bit better than others. Thanks for watching.